Hello and welcome to Gav Builds. Today I'm building a Spectra reverb pedal from Fuzzdog uh, Pedal Parts Co UK. I bought this as a kit. I've had it on my shelf for probably over a year actually. I had a big phase of building pedals. I built about 15, 16 pedals within a year and then I kind of not exactly lost interest but had interest in other things. I moved to a digital desk which I was built in effects a few months ago so I'd had less call for this stuff but I pulled it out the other day and uh, it's a Friday night, I was on theology night so to the top right of the screen I was chatting with my theology friends on Zoom and happily soldering away. So the first thing I did is I got the, the, the PCB printed circuit board in a circuit board holder and I'm putting the things that tolerate heat the best in first which is IC sockets and resistors. So yeah I've soldered in those sockets, uh, occasionally I pull out my iPad to check I'm soldering the right things and I'm also using two things to test the components as I put them in. I'm using my multimeter and I'm occasionally using that component tester that keeps flashing up. Uh, this is about two hours of video condensed very very uh, uh, very very quickly. Um, I'm soldering with leaded solder because it's the best, <laughs> it works the best, uh, you know I'm not working with it every day it's fine. Um, I'm using a mid-priced soldering iron with sort of a standardish tip, nothing very interesting going on there. So yeah, the resistors are going in nicely. I'm occasionally using a plastic spudger to try to shove the legs in without without fatiguing them, and I'm trimming everything as I go. Um, when I get to the end, I'll do a do a clean up of it with some isopropyl alcohol. So this particular effect it's a reverb but it's got delay like characteristics as you might have heard on the introduction it's it's got a, a pre-delay um, so there's a time before the reverb kicks in that you can tune you can't get it to zero you can get it to you know maybe a hundred milliseconds but it's always got this like slight delay and it's meant to simulate a slip spring reverb it's got a chip that can feed back into itself it's like a delay style chip so yeah, it's quite it's quite a fun effect, I think. Um, I very much enjoy building these things. The chip is a P2, PT2399 delay chip. And what I'm going to install in here is an Accutronics BTDR2 reverb brick. Now I couldn't get the long delay one, so I'm using a medium delay in this build. One thing I'm doing is I use um, electrical tape to hold components in place temporarily. Um, sometimes I use uh, blue tack or something. Uh, the other thing I do is um, I'll push a component through with the soldering iron held against it. Like so, I'll get one leg through, and then I might push the other side, push it through a bit further. Especially with something like a, a socket, so I might do pin one, and then sort of push it through and try to get. I'm not explaining this very well, am I? <laughs> Never mind. That uh, component tester at the bottom of the screen, I kind of switched to using that in favour of uh, in favour of that rather than the multimeter. It's quite nice; it gives you a quick, quick and dirty reading. It's close enough. I'm putting the box caps on now, which are a bit more heat sensitive than the resistors. Um, the things I do last though around the edge of the board that I can't get to because the the grippers of the PCB holder. Uh, get in the way but I really like having the PCB holder so I can just flip it back and forth flip the board back and forth as I turn it over to size up my components now as I did this I did put a couple of resistors in the wrong place which um, I was probably distracted as I was doing it or just being a numpty so at some point I do desolder and resolder but I don't think I captured all this on film because um, my phone filled up and uh, ran out of either battery or disc I can't remember as I was as I was doing the build uh, towards the end at least but yeah, it's taking shape here, got all the box caps in. Um, you have to put the uh, transistors in backwards. The transistors are acting as voltage regulators in the circuit. And they have to go backwards as to what's on the on the silk screen. So that's a, a little bit of a gotcha. Uh, there's also a mod on this pedal, which I don't do initially. So initially I just build the stock pedal because this is based on uh, something called a ghost echo pedal. I'm not like a big pedal expert, but apparently that's a famous pedal and this is a clone of it that uh, Fuzz Dog have done. Um, so it's quite a tight build, but most effects pedals are. Uh, it's got three pots very close to one another. See, so at this point, I've had to take it out of the PCB holder. And uh, this is the point I ran out of juice on my camera. Right, so that horrible noise is a test tone. If I jack into it with my oscilloscope, 
this one point. There we go. So there it is on the scope. If I turn the reverb on. It's doing a fancy dance, isn't it? Anyway, let's turn the noise off. Let's see what controls we've got. We've got dwell, attack, and depth. Let's go for a, a more interesting signal now. Let's see. Pretty cool. Seems that just going to program and do, do a clear on this. Okay, so the attack. That's the amount of time it's like, okay. It's pretty berserk. Tell the dwell doesn't it? <laughs> so if I pluck a short note, here yeah, there's a delay before the reverb comes in. And I can make that longer. So that's quite long. I've obviously got a blend. That's blend, dwell, and uh, attack. With the blend up high, it actually drives it a bit. So dry, wet. So, in the manual, what I can do is replace R5, well, I don't know what it means to use higher value to get closer to unity on R5, I don't know what that means. R17, 22k, I can swap that for a 12k, and that give, helps to give the mega dwell self-oscillation, because this dwell control is very subtle. It's hard to hear what it does, like all the way down, all the way up, hard to see. So. You change that resistor and you change the dwell pot from a 5k to a 25k. So I'm going to attempt that, but I'm getting the pot out isn't too bad. I can probably solder suck those, but I do risk damaging that cap. I'll probably put some foil tape around that. But I've also got to get at, uh, why does it keep jumping to the top of the page? R oh, that's annoying. R17, which is here, which is that one. That's under the belt and brick, so whether I can just bend it up and get to it from there, but 
Yeah, I'm going to struggle there, aren't I? That pen's not soldered very well. Let's try and even see. Yeah, it's there and there. So the points I'd need to get are there and there to desolder that. I think it's durable. I need to improve that leg because that is not a good joint on that side. So having decided that I want to do this mod, I've desoldered one of the pots here. I don't think I filmed myself doing this, or if I have, I've accidentally deleted it. Um, so I used my desoldering gun, got the middle pot off, I uh, got one of the resistors off. Uh, I'm now trying the new value. I had to order it, uh, I think I ordered it off eBay, and it took a couple of days to come. You can see it's got a split shaft instead of having the, the round shafts. Um, and now I'm putting the drill points on the case because I need to drill the case so I can get the components through so doing lots of lots of little jobs and there yep soldering on those that new potentiometer which is a higher value which means it's got more the, the, the dwell control has a lot more play I think it's 25k or 20k rather than five it's certainly a lot more then I'm cleaning it up with isopropyl you can see the strip of tape there that's captain tape which is doesn't transmit electricity and that's between the backs of the pots and the board it's because there's so little clearance in the board I couldn't fit like the plastic bases to the potentiometers so that's just there to prevent it grounding out so here I connect up uh, and obviously I've got it back to front I realized this time when I first built it I had that back to front it was late on a Friday night I thought I'd built it badly I just went to bed in a huff uh, but yes, I'd had my tester board back to front. That little tester board's great because you can just chuck a few wires in and uh, first dog sell those as well. I'm not sponsored. It's just that's the company I use. I use Jed's Peds as well. I, I, I'm not fussy. I buy they're both great companies, you know. I have a preference. But yeah, that's where I got that tester board from. It's, it's absolutely invaluable for testing these things. <laughs> At this point, I'm building the little daughter board that has the foot switch on. Uh, so these come separate. Um, you don't have to use a, a daughter board. You can just wire everything to the, the lugs on the bottom of the pedal of the foot switch. But um, the daughter board's a very nice and neat way to wire things up, make it very easy. So I'm soldering the nine lugs on, and then you've got uh, sockets on the side for the power supply and then connection to the board and then the connections to the input and output jacks. It just makes everything relatively neat, or as neat as someone as clumsy as me can get. Excuse my fat old graying head getting in the way there. Um, because the LED is mounted in here, and also a current limiting resistor. One of the things that's always a bit annoying is the CLR is marked on the main board, uh, but you're not expected to put it on if you're using one of these daughter boards, so that's something that often trips me up, at least. Cleaning it with IPA. Okay, here we go. Let's get drilling. So in, in my garage, I'm using a, a, a punch to make little divots. So when I get the drill in, it sits nicely in those holes. Um, I'm not the most manually gifted person in the world, but I've used that um, pedal drilling template that you might have seen, the, the white drilling template, um, to mark out the board uh, or the, the case. So this is uh, like a Hammond enclosure. Uh, it's made of metal, and yeah, I had a broken drill bit there, that's why it wasn't going through earlier, so I changed it. And I'm going from the thin drill bits going up gradually, uh, going thicker and thicker. I mean, I could probably take bigger jumps than I have here, I've been quite conservative. And in the end, I'll get a proper hole cutter, cutter. speak properly, Gavin, put your teeth in. And that will be uh, cutting holes that are big enough. I've got some of the components out with me, which I'm going to use to test and shove them through make sure they go through um i probably should have worn my my mask um to protect my breathing I, I am an asthmatic you might be able to hear it in my voice uh so i usually wear like a dust mask thing like a proper one like a ventilator not, not a daft things face nappies that made us wearing covid that did nothing um but yeah putting this all together now i'm testing it with the components uh turn it sideways in the vice I am not very good at things like this, but I'm getting better the more of it I do. So again, hitting it with the hole punch and making those making those holes. Um, you can buy these things pre-drilled, but you know it's nice to have a hobby in it. <laughs> you can you can just go to the shop and buy a pedal, can't you? But um, 
See, I haven't got that tight enough in the vise there. This is how quick I actually move. This isn't sped up. Um, so <laughs> yeah, putting the, the power and uh, the output jacks or the input jack, actually, that's yeah, that's the right-hand side of the pedal as will be. There's my hole cutter. You see, it goes in in steps. It's like a stepped hole cutter. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's quite satisfying doing this. I like doing a bit of drilling. I'm probably doing it completely unsafely. By the way, never copy anything I do. I'm a complete rank amateur. So here I go uh, removing the test board. I just get those little screw threads out. Um, that's been very helpful, but now I'm going to put it in the main enclosure. So you can see it's still got the wires in it. Um, the built belt and bricks stick sitting a bit proud of the board, really. It's... Um, I have to tamp it down a bit because when I've lifted it to do the mod to replace the resistor underneath it, it's sort of bent the legs out a bit and they're hard to bend back because they, they'll they just spring back now. I'm now adjusting that LED to see that it sits flush. It, uh, I've just tacked it on originally. I hadn't cut the legs until it's it's really sitting flush with the foot switch going through with all the appropriate plastic spacer and that. And now I'm soldering the wires onto the uh, input and output jacks. And I'm just going to solder it all to the little daughter board, and then uh, it's just cutting the wires of the main board and linking it all up. Um, when I've done this in the past, I've always got hopelessly confused, but um, experience has, has helped a lot there. Uh, the, the documentation from FuzzDog is really quite good, though, so generally um, it's, it's always been my fault when I've gotten confused. Uh, I did this at about five in the morning. I couldn't sleep this morning, so this is what I did. It took me just over a week to build. I started it a week last Friday. It's now Monday. I uh, woke up super early, thought I might as well do the video and stuff. But, um, filmed it all as I went. I found out my camera does 4K, um, which just means it chews through the disc on my phone. That's all I've got to work with is my phone, my iPad. But, um, I chuck it on the Mac and edit it. Right, so there's the power input. Um, that's one that's a bit prickly because you can assemble it all outside the box, but um, the power input, you've got to push in from the outside. So what I've often done is I've soldered the wires to the power input and then had to desolder them. Um, because you can only mount it from the outside, whereas the jacks you can push through from the inside. And it's just due to the way it is, the flanges on the outside with the, uh, the the power adapter. You can mount batteries in these things, but I don't think there would have been room in here, really. It's just about feasible, but you know, I didn't go for that. I think I'd have had to scrap the daughter board for a little bit of extra space then. Wires are more compressible. But I'm trying to get the wires as short as they can be, the wire runs, without them being like impractical to work with. This is stranded wire. Uh, it's it's what the hookup wire they supplied, but I've got like bags and bags of this stuff now because I never use all of it, so I should stop ordering the wire. If I... Yeah, I try to heat the um, the legs there on the belt and brick briefly with the soldering iron just to see if I bend it in a bit more. Now I'm sort of getting the, getting the pots in place and just doing it finger tight and then tightening it with completely the wrong tool. <laughs> but because they got the washers in there, I didn't scratch up my terrible paint job too badly. So I'm trimming the wire ends to get it into the daughter board. Now I'm going to start mounting everything. I'm trying to get them through. This is a bit fiddly. So sometimes putting a bit of solder on the wire before you chuck it through, um, even though you're adding mass to it, it keeps it all nicely together so the strands don't like potentially cause shorts. But I didn't do that here. I, I've managed to like twist it around and get it all through. But if a, if a hole is really tight, that's a technique I do use. So this is all coming together. That's the correct tool. <laughs> that actual wrench. Well, that's a good enough tool. And you see that plastic washer. Will I remember to thread it through the foot switch? Yes, I will. Spoiler. So, yeah, it's all coming together. It's starting to look like a pedal now. And through it goes. And that is pretty much done. So now I put all, put all the washers on, put all the, put all the nuts and bolts and everything. And now I'm going to test it. And I'm going to be ready for a horrific disappointment. So it didn't work. So I tested it looking at my uh, looking at my hookup. Now I've knocked the camera there. Sorry. <laughs> I put it on the left side of my desk instead of the right, the camera arm, so I wouldn't knock it. But I'm still knocking it. And I'm spending ages trying to figure out what I've done wrong. I'll give you a clue. The battery's flat. It's only had six and a half volts in it. I, I think I must have left it plugged into the tester board. I think the tester board's not as passive as I thought. There you go. That'll learn me. So, yep, yeah, pull out a good old Boss 9-volt power supply and chuck it in the power it on. Get the screws in. Buff, buff, buff. And then we'll be in a position to actually test this thing. So the first thing I'm going to pull out is my TR, uh, my RD6 drum machine. But first, I've got to choose some nice knobs. Now, 
these gold ones are ace, but they'll only go on the split shaft. So I had to then go and choose a couple of others. So I like the look of these white ones, but that wouldn't go on the split shaft. So <laughs> it's, it looks quite nice, actually. It's got nice symmetry. The gold one in the middle for the dwell, which is the, the oddball control here. <coughs> just a bit of feedback and sort of self-oscillation. So that's quite fun. Getting the RD6 in. I've got a website. Remember those? Gaffney.co.uk